Hey there, this is Jason. Uh, we're on freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum checking out questions right now. And I have this question, uh, can CPAP cause a loss of drive to breathe? Um, now what this person is asking actually is they've been sitting on the couch and it's one of those deals where they're kind of forgetting to breathe. Um, you know, I think all of us have this uh, every, every now and then from time to time when you're just kind of concentrating on something and you stop breathing and then you resume. That's totally normal. But what this does bring about is another question that actually has some, uh, some meat to it. So can CPAP cause a loss of drive to breathe? And the answer is yes. So you can have something called CPAP induced central apneas. And what basically happens if we have, uh, this is our little person here, give them some eyes and they're super happy but right now they're on CPAP um, so if they are set to a certain pressure and let's just say eight centimeters of water pressure is their optimal pressure um, whether that's known or unknown but let's just pretend that is their optimal pressure and that's what will cause them to sleep the best um, if they have too much air going through here that can actually throw off our respiratory drive and what we have are these little thingies in here in this area called our carotid bodies and in our carotid bodies are chemoreceptors so if our our chemoreceptors what they actually do is they detect the amount of co2 in our bloodstream um, if we have too much CO2 in our bloodstream, what that does is it actually triggers us to breathe. So if we have um, too much CPAP, let's say we're on 12 when we really should be on eight, what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna blow off too much of our CO2. And then it's gonna make our body think that we don't need to breathe. And so if our body thinks we don't need to breathe, eventually here's our breathing, it'll say, oh, our CO2 is low, so let's just not breathe for a while until that CO2 builds up because it doesn't want you to hyperventilate. If you hyperventilate, then you're going to have too much oxygen you're going to you're going to pass out. Um, so then the CO2 eventually will rise too much and then you're going to start, you know, you're going to hyperventilate. And then it's going to go through this cycle over and over and over again until uh, eventually, you know, you wake up and go about your day. Um, so yeah, it can absolutely cause, uh, CPAP can actually cause central apneas if you're using too much pressure. So that brings us to one more point, and that is sometimes it can be wrong. You know, where you're getting your information of whether you're having central apneas or not at night. So this is a screenshot of Sleepyhead. Um, and what this is here, this area here is a person's just sleeping normally, and then they wake up here just a normal wake up. Uh, they're probably, you know, shifting body positions or something. Um, as you can see, if I scroll forward, they just kind of go back to sleep and everything's normal. And then prior to this, everything is normal. But if we go back here, now what the machine did is it actually thinks it's seeing a central apnea there. And that probably is, you know, technically by definition, it's a central apnea and that they're not trying to breathe. Um, and there's a flattening of the line here. But that's a normal thing when you change body positions. It's kind of like during the day when you're, you know, you move around or you sigh or you yawn, you just stop breathing naturally for a short period of time. That's totally normal, but the machine is going to pick up on that. And so you'll look down and you'll say, oh my God, I have these clear airway apneas or these central apneas. Oh my God. Well, you have to throw those out a lot of times. If you look at them and they have a different look to them, uh, where, you know, all of it's smooth like this. And then all of a sudden right here, you see just a complete flattening. Uh, then that would be a central apnea most likely. So you have to really uh, be good at reading the data and interpreting the data. Um, so you don't just call everything a central apnea. Um, but yes, if you're one of those people that like to change your pressure and tweak it, you don't want to increase it too high because you can in fact induce central apneas with CPAP. Um, that's why it's usually best to coordinate this with your physician. But as we know, Sometimes your physicians aren't always available or, uh, you know, there's other circumstances. Uh, so anyway, if you have any questions like this, please contact us or, you know, you can join the forum. It's free. 
It's freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum. Um, you just go, a lot of people don't know how to answer questions. So what you do is just go to the main page, you log in, hit new topic, and you can ask your own topic. It's easy as that. All right, take care.